Now, shield gating. You've heard of it, right? A lot of people talk about it as it's one of the main ways of surviving in Warframe. In this video, we're going to go over everything you need to know so you can have a better understanding on how it works, different ways of doing it, and hopefully you survive more after watching this video. As always, a quick thank you for all of the members on my channel. Thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot. Before we get into shield gating, let's first talk about shields in Warframe and how they work. Shields are just an extra layer of defense. In order for you to take damage to your health your shields need to break. Shields regenerate shortly after taking no damage. They also have an innate minus 50% damage type modifier to all sources of damage. The only thing shields are weak to is toxin. Toxin as an element ignores shields and goes straight for your health. Ever wondered why you just randomly die while having shields? Yeah, toxin. We all hate it. When your shields break you will see a blue border around your screen. That's when you know your shields have broken. When they do fully break, it takes 4 seconds of not taking damage to start replenishing. However, when shields are damaged partially, it will take 1 second of not taking damage to start recharging. Of course, you can increase your shields with normal shield mods, or you can increase your shields through abilities. But now let's talk about overshields. Shields are usually blue. Overshields are purplish in color. Overshields are basically just extra shield points going above and beyond the normal shield amount that you would have depending on the frame. I'm going to be saying a lot of shields in this video. Overshields don't regenerate like normal shields, they just stack on top of the normal amount. It's also worth noting that shields are vulnerable to magnetic. This works both ways to you and your enemies, of course. Magnetic increases the damage dealt to them. Now that we have discussed how they work, what is shield gating then? When your shields break, you have a brief moment of invulnerability before you start to take damage to your health. Hence the term shield gate. It's a gate. It stops the damage going to your health briefly to avoid you getting one shot all the time. So basically, the more time you have your shields up, the less likely you're going to die, except for Toxin. So watch out for those pesky Toxin Xmas units. Now, shield gating is making use of mods or abilities to regain your shields consistently so you will always have them up when they break, meaning you spend more time in vulnerable. You can do this through many ways. The most common way is using mods like Breeze Respite, which is an aura that converts 150% of the energy you spend on abilities to shields. Let's say your ability costs 50 energy, 50 times 150% equals 75 shields. There are also mods like Organ Mods, which converts 40% of the energy cost. You can add more mods to this to add onto the value, giving you 40% extra per Organ Mod equipped throughout your whole loadout, as it's a set mod. If you have Breeze Respite plus an Organ Mod, you'll have 190% energy conversion to shields. We then have our Warframe abilities to regenerate our shields. There are many. Hildren's Pillage that pretty much purely regens all of them and gives you overshields plus status cleanse, Protea's Grenade Fans, Mag's Crush ability, Steinax's Rally Point, Bolt with the Capacitance Augment, Arrow's Condemn ability. There are a few more, but these are generally the main abilities. Get the idea here. Prior to the Abyss of the Goth update, shield gating worked a little differently. Before, you would have to make use of the Decaying Dragon Key to get your shields as low as possible so you can shield gate more often. Now, it doesn't work like that. Now, the amount of invulnerability time you get when your shields break scales with the amount of shields that you have. Before, it was 1.33 seconds for a full shield break, no matter how much shields you had. Now, depending on your modded value of the shields, this time can be anywhere from 0.33 seconds, which is the minimum, all the way up to 2.5 seconds at maximum. You will need about 1,100 150 shields to receive the full 2.5 seconds of invulnerability. Also, to get the original 1.3 seconds of shield gate, you will now need around 325 shields upon the shield break. Here is the graph which shows you the nice visually visuals on how it works. Before, partial shield breaks, meaning not full shields when broken, had a 0.33 seconds shield gate. Now, the partial shield breaks are also treated the same way with the scaling. For example, let's say your shield broke at 750 shields, you will get 2 seconds of invulnerability. That's a lot, I know. If that is confusing to you, just refer to the graph and it will make sense. If that still doesn't make sense to you, in short, the more shields you have, the longer your shield gating and vulnerability time. That's the plain and simple explanation and all you need to know. But now, you understand why it's so strong. It's invulnerability to stop you from getting one shot. But again, watch out for the toxin. We used to use the Decaying Dragon Key before, but now they have nerfed it so you will permanently have the lowest amount of shield gate time. So please, don't use the Decaying Dragon Key, it's not worth it at all. They have also added in a new mod called Catalyzing Shields, which I quite like to be honest. 
What this mod does is basically brings the old shield gating mechanics into a mod. So it reduces your total shields by 80% and gives you a guaranteed 1.33 seconds of invulnerability at max. This was the old gating times, so there's nothing really that's different here. However, this does still apply to the whole duration scales with the amount of shields you have mechanic, like these examples here explained in the forum. You can get this mod from the Oracle Vaults on Deimos. This mod is best used with Breeze for Spite as it drops your shield super low, allowing you to get to the max shields with basically one or two casts depending on the energy cost of the ability. I will probably still use Breeze for Spite when I'm not using Catalyzing Shield. You only need about 300-ish to get the 1.3 seconds of invulnerability, but still, Catalyzing shields plus breach of spite equals good. However, there is a very important thing to note. At the moment, overshields, remember these purple little things there, do affect the shield gating time. But Pablo has confirmed this will be changed. So please keep that in mind. It will change in the future so that overshields do not affect the shield gating times. Meaning you will have to use something like redirection to increase your shield so you can get more invulnerability duration. We also have arcanes that help us with replenishing shields. Arcane Barrier and Arcane Aegis. Both of these arcanes are on shield damage, meaning the more shields you have and the frequency of which the shields are damaged means the more likely they are to proc. So keep that in mind when using these arcanes, they benefit the most when your shields are up more often. Now I have just spat all this info to you. What does this all mean? Well, shield getting is commonly used in Steel Path. It can be used in Star Chart, but you shouldn't have survivability issues when building your frames correctly for the most part. But in Steel Path, well, we're getting into one tapping territory. There are four ways we can shield gate now. The first is the Catalyzing Mod, Breeze for Spite, which I mentioned earlier. This will drop our total amount drastically, hopefully bringing us to around 100-ish shields, meaning with an ability cost of 50 energy with Breeze for Spite, which will give us 75 shields per cast, Cast twice, we are in either overshields or max shields territory, as an example. That's one way. The second is through modding for shields using redirection and so on, and still using Breeze of Spite. This is not as effective as it used to be, but it can still work. You can also lower your efficiency with Blind Rage to increase the energy cost for your abilities to give you more shields per cast, but you have to compensate this with energy sustain then. The third way is using frames that regenerate your shields. Like I mentioned earlier with all the abilities, the most common is Pillage and Condemn at the moment for the Helmets. And then of course Mag with her fourth ability, it's amazing, and Proteus Grenades are also amazing. The fourth way is Niche, but different. Shield Gating through your Companions. There are two mods we can use for this, and that is Guardian and Protect. Guardian is a mod for all robotic companions. Protect is specifically for the Raxa Kubro. Guardian regens your entire shields and has a 30 second cooldown. Pairing this with the Manifold Bond mod, it reduces your cooldowns drastically. Guardian will only apply when your shields run out fully. Or you can use Protect with the Raxa Kubro. Protect is a weird one, but it has potential. Your Kubro will replenish your shields for 300 if it's completely depleted. If they are not full, it will give an average of around 450-ish per replenish. This info was taken straight from the wiki. The cooldown is inconsistent. Sometimes it will proc protect multiple times in a row and then go for a 5 second cooldown. Then it will randomly go into either a 15 second or a 10 second cooldown if used in rapid succession. Now this in itself may not seem that great, but pair this with Arcane Aegis plus Breeze Respite on your frame. Well, <laughs> you see where I'm going with this. It's basically shield gating on roids. I haven't tested this extensively to see if it's worth it, but it's just a thought for you guys you can have fun with. The downside is you're basically just fully building for shield gating. You can also make this better by using catalyzing shields to lower your total amount. And that's pretty much shield gating explained and all the ways of using it. It's very handy, especially if you're wanting to start doing endurance runs or just feel like you're dying a lot in Steel Path. It's a useful mechanic to learn and use. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you learned something new. That is the video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Thank you, last one.